Hi everyone and welcome to another video, the first one for the new year. For today I have a nice and small Apple Mac Mini to play with. Let's see what we can still do with it and make it usable again for 2023. During the video we'll start by taking a quick look at the Mac Mini in general and the one I have here. Then I'll upgrade the slow hard disk to an SSD and I will also install macOS Ventura on it, although not supported. All of that should extend the useful life of this nice device significantly. The Mac Mini got introduced beginning 2005, and at that time still had a PowerPC CPU. In the meanwhile, we are several generations further, and the latest additions are the Apple Silicon based devices. The design of these series is lovely to my ID. It has evolved over time from the earlier mostly plastic case to the current unibody metal housing. Since Apple dropped the optical drive, starting with the 2011 model, I really like how it looks. It feels high quality and also it just has something interesting to have a full blown computer in such a compact and silent enclosure. The model I have here is a late 2012. It came in two variants, the Mac Mini 6.1, which is equipped with an i5 3210M as CPU and a 6.2 with an i7 3615QM. In terms of connections, you have all you need here as you can see as well. My Mac Mini is the first of the two I just mentioned, so it has an Intel Core i5 as you can see in about this Mac. It's also equipped with 8GB of DDR3 and a 500GB 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive. The internals of this late 2012 model are very equal to the one of the 2011 model, so what I will be doing here should be roughly the same for any of those as well. But first, before we get to open up the device, let's see how disk performance is before replacing the drive with an SSD. In general, starting up the device and starting applications already feels pretty slow. Not that it's unworkable, but not comfortable anymore either. AGA system test shows us exactly why it feels that way. With only 52 megabytes per second write and only slightly higher read speeds, let alone random I.O. performance, this is pretty slow. Although the rest of the hardware isn't top notch either, disk performance, to my ID, is the real bottleneck here on this machine. Just as an example, simply open up the mail application takes over 10 seconds. Before we get to installing the new SSD, we need to make sure we have a way to install an operating system on it. Currently, I'm running the latest supported macOS version for this Mac Mini, which is Catalina. Although that still works pretty fine actually, it is about to be end of life and will soon also stop receiving security updates. Using OpenCore Legacy Patcher, it is possible to install and run the latest macOS version Ventura on this Mac Mini late 2012, although it is not supported officially by Apple. So as preparation, I will create a bootable USB drive with the Ventura installer. I did a detailed video on that subject, in case you're interested in knowing more about how to install macOS Ventura on unsupported hardware, I'll put a card here and a link in the description to that video. For this video, I'll be going through that process rather quick. I'll start to first prepare a USB drive of at least 16GB. Then we can download OpenCore Legacy Patcher. launch it and use it to download the Ventura installation files. Once these are all downloaded and installed, we can continue with creating a bootable installer for Ventura. followed by patching the USB drive to boot into OpenCore. All of this took quite some time as we had to download a large amount of data, process it and copy all of that to the USB drive. But now we should be all good to do the hard drive swap. I will be swapping the current hard drive with this Samsung 850 EVO SSD of 250GB, but any other 2.5 inch SATA SSD should do the job as well. We start the process by turning over the device. On the bottom, there is a round plastic cap, which you can just turn slightly counterclockwise to release it. After lifting it, we can already see the internals of the Mac Mini. 
The easiest part to service here is the memory, 2 times 4 GB in my case. I'll get it out, although not strictly needed, but just to not damage it. If you would like to upgrade the memory, you can simply replace the installed DIMMs with higher capacity ones. The next part which you need to remove is the fan assembly. It's held into place with two Torx T6 screws. I have a set which I used earlier to work on a MacBook Air which has the correct size. We only need to remove the top two screws. The third point that holds the fan is a rubber ring around some kind of spacer and you can just slide off the fan there. Once removed, we can disconnect the fan from the board. To do so, gently pull the cable upwards and it will release. Next, the plastic part on the left. This one is held in place with a single T6 in the left bottom corner. Once that torque screw is out, we can wiggle it a bit to get it out of the case. The last part to get out, before we can access the hard drive, is the Wi-Fi antenna and the metal frame holding it. To do so, we need to remove four screws. The taller ones on the outer sides are 2mm Allen key. The two middle ones are Torx T8. I didn't have that size, but I found a flat screwdriver that was a good match as well. Once the screws are out, we can lift the metal frame. The connector for the Wi-Fi antenna is here on the left side, so be careful when doing so. Just pull the wire gently upwards to disconnect it safely. Now that this is all out, we can finally get to see the hard drive. It's covered with a black plastic. These are the proprietary SATA connectors. As you can see, there are two and one is connected to the hard drive already. To get it disconnected, simply lift up the connector with a spudger. Then it is possible to get the hard drive out. There we have it, our 500GB 5400 RPM SATA hard drive. We will need to move the SATA connector from here and small screws on the side over to the new SSD. The SATA connector is taped to the black protective film which is around the hard disk, so before you can get the connector out, you need to remove that piece of tape first. Then we can simply put it on the SSD. And fix those two screws on it as well. There is no need to move the protective film over to the SSD as it doesn't expose any electronics. The two screws which we moved hold the drive in place in the Mac Mini's housing. Taking a better look at how this works will help you to put back the SSD. As you can see, those two holes on top here is where the screws on the SSD should go. The way this works the easiest, to my idea at least, is to put the Mac Mini on its side. Then put in the SSD. and tilt the Mac Mini forward while moving the SSD slightly left or right until it clicks in the right place. Once you manage to put the drive back in place, simply press the SATA connector back to where it belongs as well. The next step is to put back the metal frame and the Wi-Fi antenna. The connector for that Wi-Fi antenna is located close to the SATA ports, and it can take a bit of puzzling to connect it back as it tends to disconnect easily as soon as you move the cable under a slight angle. 
But once you get it connected, guide the cable properly under the frame and put that one back in place as well. The two T8 screws in the middle actually go into the SSD. It holds it in place from that side. Then the two outer 2mm Allen key screws. These also serve as a fixing point for the round plastic cap. The rest of the steps is the reverse of what we did to start. The plastic part needs to go back in and gets fixed with a single T6 screw. And then we can reconnect the fan. This can be a bit tricky. All you need to do is to align it correctly, then press it in the connector from the top. Now we can put back the fan where it belongs, slide it over that spacer and fix it again with the two T6 screws. And finally we can put back the two DDR3 memory dims. Now we are ready to close back the Mac Mini by putting back the plastic cap and turn it to get it fixed. I guess the hardest part is done now. Let's see if everything still powers up. The question mark which we see here is what we expect as the SSD does not have an operating system installed. But that's why we prepared our USB drive and now it's time to put it in. OpenCore almost immediately pops up and we can launch install macOS Ventura from here. In the recovery menu, let's start disk utility and see if the system actually detected our SSD. All is expected here, that is very good news. Now let's prepare that SSD for the macOS Ventura installation by clicking on Erase after we already selected the SSD on the left side. Then we can give the drive a name, select GUID and APFS and click Erase. That's done and we can close this utility. Finally, we are ready to install macOS Ventura. Just make sure you select the freshly prepared drive and continue. All you can do now is wait until the installation completes. Despite this drive being a lot faster, it still takes quite some time. If all goes well, you will eventually end up with this wizard where you can click through. until you reach your freshly installed macOS Ventura desktop. At this point, the Mac is still booting from the USB drive as we didn't install OpenCore on the SSD yet. So let's re-download OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Then start it. And let's first see if we don't need to do any more patches after the installation. It says all applicable patches already installed. That means we are good here. So next we can click build and install open core. After the build, choose install to disk. Here we need to choose our SSD now and then the EFI partition on that same drive. That's it. Open core is now installed on the SSD and we no longer need the USB drive to boot into Ventura. After a reboot, we are completely done. But before I end the video, let's see how much faster this SSD is over that hard drive which you had in here originally. 
I've reinstalled AGA system test, so let's launch that and start the same test as we did before. Whoa, that's almost 10 times faster, and that's only for sequential read and write. Random IO will be improved even more. Let's also repeat the same simple test as we did before by opening up the mail application. Well, it's pretty easy to notice that this is a lot faster. And it might not look like a huge difference, but believe me that this is a world of difference in practice when just working with a Mac. Besides just making this Mac Mini a lot faster, we also got macOS Ventura on it. We can immediately take advantage of the newest features this brings us, like Stage Manager for example. Now to end the video, let's keep traditions and have a look at what About This Mac has to say. That's all I have for this video. Installing an SSD in this over 10 years old Mac Mini definitely makes it usable again today. And upgrading or installing macOS Ventura does that even more. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and would appreciate the like if you did. If you like this kind of videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel and enable notifications. Thanks again and hope to see you back here soon.